Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 99. Please turn to it. Page number 99 and today is our lesson number 47. The very last problem is what we are going to do. Problem number 3 which deals with frequency distribution and our, our job, problem number 3, the very last one, and our job is to produce a pie chart based on that frequency distribution. So here is what is told, uh, here is what is told to us. Uh, these are the grades that are given to us and here they tell you the frequency, how frequently how uh, a given grade occurs. A, we are told we have four of those. B, was, B were given out five times. There were 12 C's. Then we have six D's and three F's. The very first thing we need to do before we figure out the pie chart is to figure out how many total number of students we have. And I think actually they tell you in the problem. It says the grade distribution for 30 students. And of course they don't have to tell you that part. We can see it right here. We can add them up. And we'll see, we can see how many students there are. So here we go. 6 plus 3 is 9. And 9 plus 9. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. So 0, carry 2, and then 3. The next thing we have to do is figure out the percentages for each of these categories. A, B, C, and D. Whatever the items happen to be here. So how many A's do we have? What, fraction are, uh, what fractions are A? Well, A are 4 out of 30. Now 4 out of 30 is not enough because when you're doing a pie chart, in the pie chart a circle is given to us and we have to distribute, we have to show the distribution of these grades and in the area of the circle which represents of course the entire circle, the 100%. So we have to figure out the respective percentages. This is where the things are going to get tricky. Okay, Pay attention here. How do we figure out 4 out of 30 is what percentage? That's the question. 4 out of 30 is what percentage? Percent as you know means per 100. Percent means percent means per 100 per 100 out of 100. Somehow we have to make the denominator 100. What number times 30 is 100? That's where that's the key part here. You see, 30, 30 times 3, 30 times 3 is just going to give us 90. We need 100 at the bottom. We need 100 at the bottom. This is just going to give us 90. But 30 times 3 and a third, 30 times 3 and a third will do the job because 30 times 3 is 90 and then a third of 30, a third of 30 will give us another 10. So we have to multiply the top and the bottom by 3 and 1 third. If you multiply top and the bottom by 1 third, we'll have the percentage that we're looking for. So let's find out, shall we? So how much is 4 times 3 and 1 third. Let's do it here. 4 times 3 and 1 third. Well, same as before. 4 times 3 is just 12. Plus 4 times 1 third. 4 times 1 third is just 4 third. 4 third is, 4 third is basically 3 thirds plus another third. 3 thirds plus another third because 3 third is a 1 plus another third. So it's 12 plus plus 4 times 1 third, it, comes, it boils down to 4 plus a 1 plus a third, which is 13 and a third. 13 and a third. So this is exactly 13 and 1 third percent. We're going to pretend that it's approximately 13 percent. That's close enough. It's 13 percent. It represents 13 percent in terms of the area of the circle. Let's move on. Now we have to do the 5. Same thing. So we have to do now 5 times 3 and 1 third. Because here we're going to end up with 5 over 30. And we're going to multiply top and bottom by 3 and 1 third. So 5 times 3 and 1 third is 15. 5 times, five times 3 is 15. And 5 times 1 third is going to be 5 and 1 third. 5 and 1 third, which is same as Oh, right here, three thirds and two thirds. Three thirds, three thirds plus two thirds is going to give us five thirds. Five times three is fifteen. 
plus a 1 plus a 2 third. So it's 16 and 2 third. This comes out to be 16 and 2 third, which we can approximate as 17%. Let's move on then. Then we have a 12. Same exact idea. So now we do 12 times 12 times 3 and 1 third, which is going to give us 36. Oh, this is very easy. 36 and 12 times 1 third. 36 plus 12 times 1 third. Well, 1 third of 12 is 4. So that actually is very easy. 36 plus 4. 36 plus 4 is 40. So C is 40%. C represents 40%. Perhaps that's what they were asking in the book. Because they wouldn't ask something as complicated as this. This is a bit too much. What fraction of the circle would be needed to represent the number of students who received the grade B? Oh, grade B is about 17%. Well, in that case, they should have said approximately. Let me read one more time. It says the grade distribution, I'm, I'm reading the, the problem verbatim. The grade distribution on the examination for a class of 30 students is shown above. If the circle, pi graph that is, is used to represent the grade distribution for the students in the class, what fraction of the circle would be needed to represent the number of students who received a B on the exam. Since, since they do not use the word approximately, then we have to tell them we need 16 and 2 third percent. Anyway, this is 40 percent. Let's move on then. That, that comes out with 40 percent. 6 out of 30. 6 out of 30. Well, 6 out of 30 is very easy. You divide top and bottom by 6 and you end up with 1 fifth. One fifth, of course. One fifth, of course. We know. One fifth, of course. We know is twenty percent. And finally, three out of thirty is very easy. Also, three out of thirty is just ten percent. So there you have it. We have all the percentages. We're going to erase this part. We don't need it. We have all the percentages. A's are. A's were given out thir about thirteen percent of the time. B's were given out about seventeen percent of the time. So as you can see. 13 plus 17 is 30 so far. C's were given out 40%, so that's 30% plus 40%, that's 70 so far, and then 20 and a 10. 20 for D, and 10% of the class received F. That's it, we're done. We have our circle ready to go. We just have to plot these segments, these slices, if you like. We just have to plot these. Sometimes they're referred to as segments, sometimes they're referred to as, referred to as slices. And sometimes they are referred to as sectors, whether you call them sectors or slices or segments, it doesn't really matter. So here's our 100%. Let's break it up into four parts to start out with so that we have some point of reference. So that we have some point of reference. And let's start, let's start with something easy. Let's start with something easy. What do you want to start with? I'm going to start with, uh, with the 20%. So 20%. Now remember, this, this is a quarter of a circle. Each one of them is a 25%, obviously. Each one is 25%, which means if we were to divide this into five parts, one, two, three. Now you see, that doesn't, that doesn't work. You have, to, you have to be reasonable. This is one part, and it doesn't work. One, two, three, four, five. It's not going to work. How do we do it? You don't have to be precise, obviously. You have to eyeball it, but you have to be reasonable. One, two, Three, four, five. There we go. That, that, I'm, I'm happy with that. So each of these slices, each of these slices now, each of these slices, represents five percent. Each of these slices represents five percent, which means this part that you see here, this part that you see there, which is the leftover from a quarter of the circle, represents twenty percent. represents 20% which is our which is our D. So that's D. Let's see what we can do. If we were to extend this line out, if we were to extend this line out, then this is also 5%. And this part is 20%. Well there is 10%. F is 10%. So let's see if we can do F over there. Halfway through. There you go. This is 10% right here. And that would rep that can represent our F. Okay, watch what happens now. Now this is 10%, this is 25%. Oh, there you go. Okay, listen carefully. This is 10%, this is 25%. The quarter of the circle. 
there's a 5% left over from there, 5 plus 25 is 30, 30 plus 10 is 40, 40% 40 is your C, right there. So all of this will be C, all of this will be C. All of that you see there is C. So that takes care of C, that takes care of D, that takes care of F, which was 10%. Now we got uh, now you got the odd one out, which is 13% and 17%. And you see this is quarter of the circle, which is which is 25%. And this is 5% of the circle, so 25 plus 5 giving us a 30% sector, which is exactly what we need for A and B. A and B together add up to 30%. The question is how do you divide? 13% and 17%, don't make it too much fuss about it, just approximate, that's all it is. As long as you do, do a half a decent job of approximating, that's what it is. So again, I'm, we're going to cut this slice into five equal parts, okay, watch what happens. One, two, three, four, five, very good. So each of this sector represents 5%. Each of these represents 5%. So here's 5%, here's another 5%, there's another 5%, and here's another 5%. Okay, listen what happens. We need 17%. We need 17% for B. So this 5%, this 5%, this 5%, and then take another tiny slice out of it here, and this will be the 2%. That will be your 17%, which is, which is B. And finally, this, this empty part that you see there, all of this empty area that you see there, which is 3% here, a 5% here, and a 5% there. 5 plus 5 plus 3, that's your 13% for A. That's all. We're done. This is very difficult to see between this one and that one, isn't it? I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing in a double way. There you go, that's much better. Yes, that's much better, even though I say so myself. It's a masterpiece. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? We'll start algebra tomorrow. Bye now.